Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And make sure you hit that like button. This is the episode where you guys get to get creative and put in your recruit information. And let's just talk about our recruits real quick. Eduardo Schaefer actually commits to Notre Dame. I have no idea how we fell back so much. It seemed like, you know, we had our full points on him and all of a sudden he just commits to another school. But let's talk about the recruits. So this is a great episode for you guys because this is when you guys get to get creative and put in your recruit information. And let's talk about that a little bit. Let's uh, talk about like the format here. So I picked the best uh, recruiting stories and sometimes there's more than what I can choose. There's only 20 recruits that I can choose. But I mean, if, the better the story, the better chance you have of being a recruit. And uh, let's talk about the positions. Don't put in a running back. I mean, you can see I just had two running back recruits that committed to our school this year. And uh, it would be pretty unwise to put in a running back recruit. And I do want to talk about, you know, other positions. Safety might be a smart position because we have Jonathan Leonard Jr. And also Trey Webb going into their senior year next year. That might be a smart position. Uh, linebacker, middle linebacker in particular, might be a smart position. You might want to think about that because we do have Ethan Aguayo and Jesse Ozuna as well graduating this year. So we don't really have, uh, I guess, a set in stone replacement. A uh, receiver might be a good one since we, since you've seen Eduardo Schaefer did not commit to our school. We don't have any receiver commits, and I believe we actually uh, might have one. I don't know, but I don't know if we'll have any. And then also, you know, just offensive line. Defensive line is always a need, especially at defensive tackle. We do not have a, like a set in stone defensive tackle for the future. Caleb Oaks is going into his senior year next year, so... Uh, we're going to need a replacement there. And then also just all around. I mean, cornerback, we always need that because, we, you know, you've seen it. We've been switching back and forth with cornerbacks. So you guys want to put in your information, get some good stories out there, and let the best man win, I guess. So we do have 20 slots, so remember that. And I can't select everybody, but I'm going to try to get as many people in as I can. So let's hop into this action. This is kind of a meaning, uh, meaningless game. And we're going up against Nevada here as Monto Aaron throws across the middle. And Nevada is not really a great team. Uh, they're kind of a middle of the pack team. But we it looks like we're slated for the conference championship as Billy Humphreys gets in for the touchdown, the opening drive. And that drive seemed a little easy. Nevada doesn't have the greatest defense, but... We're going to still play this game and uh, try to put up some numbers. But uh, just looking at, you know, just the landscape of the conference, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next year uh, if we do win the conference championship. Uh, I kind of want to jump conference to conference. I've never done that before in any of my dynasties. Just jump conference to conference, seeing if I can win in every single conference, do something like that. I don't know. Uh, but doing that or going independent or something like that, I don't really know what the plan is. I'm still only a, like a 68 overall, but uh, I did kind of uh, get better way faster. What I normally do as Jonathan Leonard falls on the ball, forced by Cameron Alexander. Take another look at that. The quarterback trying to scramble out, and that's what happens uh, when quarterbacks try to run. So we do have the turnover already, but I, like I said, I don't know what I want to do as far as conferences go. If I do win the conference championship, I'm ranked way earlier than expected. Mostly because I upset number four Miami. If I wouldn't have upset them on uh, this year, I probably wouldn't be ranked at this point. Even with a two-loss record, I still probably wouldn't be ranked. So uh, let's hop back into the action. Let me know what you guys think. What Do you guys think I should maybe go to a different conference? Uh, I don't know if I'd go straight to the Pac-10 or Pac-12, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Because uh, I do want to try some other conferences that I haven't played in yet. And maybe that will, you know, kind of make it, give it a different feel since, you know, I'm going to still schedule um, some of our rivals like Stanford. I'll probably still ske schedule every year, maybe. Uh, and then um, I don't know if I'll schedule any more rivals, but we'll see. I don't know what I want to do. I want to play some new teams each year, not just the four out of conference or not. The, yeah, the four out of conference games. And I want to play like a lot of new teams every year, just keeping it fresh, you know, 
getting some new competition as Tyler Evans gets into the end zone. And he makes it a two-score lead already in the first quarter. So here we go, Nevada on offense here towards the end of the first quarter here. Islano rolling gotcha, out right, and he's going to get sacked, and that's going to be Terrence Miller for his first sack of the game. He's our team-leading sack getter as he's got 10. That's his 10th on the year. Gotcha, so bitch. now on a second and 13, another sack. That's Caleb Oaks. And, man, Nevada cannot do anything so far in this game. So now on a third and 21, here's Solano from the shotgun thrown out to the right side. He's going to be uh, get a completed pass, but Caleb Fossum is going to get hit 14 yards, and that's his first completed pass of the game. And they have to punt the ball away already. So we're already running the clock because I'm like, man, I don't like these kind of games where we just we're just killing them. And here's the pass to Matt Pollard for 12 yards as that is a first down. So now past the 50-yard line. Here is Montel Aaron from the shotgun. Going to throw across the middle, and that's going to be caught by Trey Walker. That's a dime right there. I don't know how he fit that one in there, but that's a first down in between two defenders. So now first and 10 past the 35-yard line. Here is Aaron rolling out to the left side. He's going to try to get rid of it. It's going to be an open man, but nobody is there for it. I don't know what that was thrown in the vicinity of two receivers, and nobody turns around to catch it. So now third and 10, here's Montel Aaron throwing the ball deep to Bailey Gaither, and that's going to be caught one-handed, 24 yards. And with that pass, Montel Aaron is the all-time leading passer in school history. But take another look at this catch. He caught that with one hand. How did he catch that? <laughs> so now we're inside the 10-yard line after that catch. Bailey Gaither showing off in his final home game as this is senior night, as Montel Aaron throws across the middle, and there's Matt Pollard getting in for the touchdown. And what a season Matt Pollard is having. He's got about 800 yards receiving. He's leading our team in touchdowns, I believe, and just having an incredible freshman season. As he's only 83 speed, I did not expect him to have such a big impact so early, especially not having the greatest of speed. I've never even like had a receiver that has that low of speed that's dominated like he has. And as a freshman, I mean, I mean, it, it's, it might be, you know, uh, kind of a sign of things to come because I've never had a 1,000-yard receiver in this dynasty yet as maybe he's going to be the first. So now on a second and 10, throwing the ball across the middle is Sol uh, Solano, and he's finding O'Leary O'Rang that time for 16 yards, and that is a first down. So now four minutes left here in the second quarter, another throw across the middle. He's finding Mannix inside the 10-yard line for 21 yards, and that's a first down tackled by Jonathan Leonard Jr. One thing I want to point out about Jonathan Leonard Jr. And one thing about the progression in this game. You know, I was given a boost in awareness. And I looked at Jonathan Leonard Jr.'s awareness. And it's actually at a 90 right now. I'm like, how did he get to a 90 awareness? And they've actually been progressing on their own quite a bit. Jonathan Leonard Jr. went from a 78 awareness in the offseason going into this season to a 90. He's never won player of the game. And he's been getting a boost in awareness pretty much every single week. So I think, you know, coming next year, I'm going to change that rating to something else. Maybe you'll get a boost in catching if you're a receiver, a uh, boost in break tackle if you're running back, boost in throw accuracy if you're a quarterback, you know, things like that because um, those ratings don't really go up. I see awareness going up quite a bit, and maybe I should change that to something else. So now facing a first and 15 here, Montel Aaron throwing across the middle. He's going to be picked off by Christian, the cornerback, and we throw our first interception of the game. But take another look. This cornerback had a chance, had to choose. He chose the middle guy. I thought he was going to choose the outside guy, but he jumps that route and gets the interception. He probably read the scouting report. We run that play to perfection with Trey Walker, and he gets the interception. So now here's Solano back out on the next drive here scrambling to the right side for 10 yards he's got to cover that ball remember he has fumbled already once so a minute 20 left in the half here Solano scrambling out to the right side breaks the tackle and he gets tackled by Andre Armstead and that's a gain of nine so now past the 50 yard line a minute left in this half here Solano throwing the screen pass out to the left side that's going nowhere look who it is Jonathan Leonard Jr. the junior and he's uh, getting them to lose four yards. So now second and 14, throw out to the left side. That's going to be caught by O'Leary O'Rang, and that's going to be a gain of eight. 
So now under a minute left in this half. Here's Solano scrambling out to the right side. Going to get stopped by Andre Armstead and cleaned up by Ethan Aguayo. As look at that pressure that Ar Andre Armstead puts in there. And they actually end up punting that ball. They don't even go for it or kick the field goal. So we go into halftime with this 21 to 7 lead. And it's been not even close. So now to start this second half, here we go on defense as this game has pretty much been a defensive game for this San Jose State team and maybe our best half of defense yet. So now on a first and 10 on the first play, throwing the ball deep and there's a catch by Mannix. Wow, that was actually really, really lucky. Trey White just didn't get turned around and the sophomore gives up the big play through the air to start out this half. So now here on the second and nine, scrambling out to the right side there is Solano. He's running into Andre Armstead and he's got his eighth sack of the season as here we go, third and 14. Hand off to Kincaid. Kincaid's not getting anything. Why are they running a draw play on a third and 14? You're not throwing this defense off as they now settle for a long field goal here on a fourth and eight. And that one's gonna be wide to the left as they just cannot get any points on the board. So here, to start the third quarter possession here is Tra Tyler Nevins getting the handoff up the middle, picking up eight yards on that one. So now third and 12, third and two actually. Here's Montel Aaron throwing across the middle. Here's Matt Pollard with the catch, 10 yards and a first down as we move towards the 50. So now on a first and 10, here is Zamora Ziegler getting the counter play out to the left side. He's picking up only a gain of three on that one as this clock does continue to run. So now on a second and seven, throwing out to Billy Humphreys. He's using a stiff arm, getting about 10 more yards on that stiff arm, and he picks up a gain of 14. And now we are in the driver's seat. So now on a first and 10, throwing out to the right side. Here is Carl Wolf, the walk-on freshman, and he picks up 12 as we are now inside the 20 yard line. Here's Zamor Ziegler finally picking up a big hole up the middle and he's getting a gain of 15 and he's got 63 yards rushing so far in this game as we get inside the five. So now here's Tyler Devins getting the carry up the middle and that's a gain of four and that's a touchdown as this is just turning into a blowout. So now on the next possession here is Solano gotcha, facing some pressure. That's gonna be Jesse Ozuna, the senior off the edge, he gets the sack, and man, he went in unblocked. That was an easy sack, and we're not even sending blitzes. We're just getting to the quarterback here, Another and Solano one. tries to scramble out to the right side again. He's tackled and sacked by Ethan Aguayo for his second sack of the game. So now here's Solano, third and 16. Here he is in the pocket, gonna throw the ball deep over the middle. That's gonna be tipped by Jonathan Leonard Jr., and another punt for this defense as they have not been able to move the ball at all. Besides that one long throw, they haven't really got anything. So now here's Matt Pollard on the next drive, picking up a gain of 13 on the catch across the middle, and that's a first down. So now Montel Aaron, the junior from the shotgun, scrambling out to the right side, gonna avoid a tackler and throw the ball. He's gonna find Billy Humphreys, 20 yards, and that's a first down. And man, this just seems easy in this game. So now on a first and 10, throwing out to the left side, there's Carl Wolf. The walk-on freshman, he's picking up a gain of 15 as that is another first down through the air. So now on a second and 10, here's Montel Aaron throwing the ball deep. That's actually to Billy Humphreys, and that was just terribly overthrown as that should have been picked off. So now third and 10, 10 seconds left in this third quarter. Here's Montel Aaron staying in the pocket, throwing across the middle to Carl Wolf for 10 yards. Another catch by Wolf as he's got four catches for 48 yards and a first down. So now facing a third and goal inside the 10 yard line, throwing out to Trey Walker that time. And that's actually gonna be incomplete. And we're gonna have to settle for a field goal, our first one of the day. So now we're into the fourth quarter here as Solano trying to scramble out and he's getting walloped on that one. That's Ethan Aguayo for his third sack of the game. I mean, this just dominate domination and they just can't do anything this game. So now gotcha, second bitch. and 10, sending another blitz off the edge and look who it is. It's Andre Armstead, two sacks for him in this game. And wow, what a game. Ethan Aguayo's got three, Andre Armstead's got two. I mean, that guy is just insane. Andre Armstead gets so much pressure and it's not even that he gets the sacks every play, but I mean, he gets sacks, but he pretty much opens lanes for everybody else 
and he keeps the quarterback contained. He's a very great contain rusher. Outside edge contain. I mean, it's just amazing. So now in the second and six, here's a throw across the middle. There's Trey Walker. He's getting open in the middle of the defense, and he's getting to about the 23-yard line on that throw, and that's a first down for the junior. So now, quick throw across the middle. There's Trey Walker again. He's picking up a gain of 14 as he's up to 100 yards on that catch as he's got seven catches in this game. So now here's Montel Aaron throwing across the middle. There's Trey Walker, and he got it. Wow, how did he catch that one? And that was a quick throw. And look at this. It bounces off the defender's hands into Trey Walker's hands. And it's just that type of game, 38-7. to seven with three minutes left in this game. So here's Solano this time, faces some pressure, somehow gets a, gets around those uh, defensive linemen, and he picks up only two. So now facing a second and eight, handoff to Kincaid, and he's not getting anything tackled by Jesse Ozuna, the senior, and now we get him to a third and six. Here's Solano, throw it out to the left side. That's almost a pick six. Trey Walker had it in his hands, and that would have been his third one of the season. So now fourth and six, it comes down to this. Throw to the left side. That's gonna be incomplete. The receiver can't keep his feet in bounds. He should have probably had that one, but he can't and we get the victory. And this is an easy victory, <laughs> to be honest. This is an easy victory, 38 to seven. And I'm looking forward to your guys' recruit submissions as we came away with the victory. Heading into conference championship week. Zamora Ziegler, nine attempts, 74 yards. Matt Pollard had a good game. Trey Walker goes over 100. And it was just an all-around solid game. The defense definitely shined in this one. And it was just one of those games where, you know, we just couldn't be stopped. And I'm actually surprised. The progression of this team is just remarkable. We were not doing this in the beginning of the year, but I feel like Andre Armstead had a lot to do with that. It seemed like a pass rusher really does affect your defense. And we had two from him, three from Ethan Aguayo, one from Jesse Ozuna, one from Terrence Miller. I mean, we were getting after the quarterback. He couldn't do anything this game. So get those uh, recruit submissions in. They went 0 for 7 on third down. I mean, <laughs> wow. I mean, they couldn't do anything. 118 passing yards, and they only had 174 total offense. I mean, that is just domination if there ever was a dominant game. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, get those uh, recruits in, stay tuned, let's get it, let's go.